suppose that the town of Blue sold Series A bonds with a face amount of $50 million and a stated rate of interest at 10% and 97. The bonds will mature in 30 years and pay the stated rate of interest twice a year. These bonds sold at 97% of face value, or $48,500,000. The difference of $1,500,000 is the discount on bonds payable. The reason the bonds sold at a discount is because the market rate of interest is greater than the stated rate of 10%, and therefore investors are only willing to buy the bond at less than full price. Suppose the bonds were issued on January 1st. On January 1st, Blue would recognize receipt of $48,500,000 in cash, but it would also recognize a bond payable liability of $50 million. The debit shortage of $1,500,000 is the discount on bonds payable. Think of discount on bonds payable as prepaid interest. This is the interest the issuer of the bond prepaid to bondholders by way of discounting the bond price up front. As part of the recognition of the bond discount over time, the amortization process begins by dividing the total discount by the life of the bond. Therefore, the $1,500,000 will be amortized equally 30 years and twice a year, a total of 60 periods. There are a few ways to amortize discounts. Assume that the town of Blue uses the straight line method of amortization because it's the simplest. Blue would make an entry on June 30th to recognize the bond discount amortization and the semi-annual interest payment. Note that the bondholders will only receive $2,500,000 in cash, which is the stated rate of the bond, 10%, times the face value of the bond, $50 million, divided by two since interest is paid semi-annually. However, the interest expense is $25,000 higher because it includes the amortization of bond discount, which is more or less like prepaid interest. Bonds can also be sold at a premium. Suppose that the town of Blue sold Series A bonds with a face amount of $50 million and a stated rate of interest at 10% at 103. The bonds will mature in 30 years and pay the stated rate of interest twice a year. These bonds sold at 103% of face value, or $51,500,000. The difference of $1,500,000 is the premium on bonds payable. The reason the bonds sold at a premium is because the market rate of interest is lower than the stated rate of 10%, and therefore investors are willing to buy the bond at a price above the face value. Suppose the bonds were issued on January 1st. On January 1st, Blue would recognize receipt of $51,500,000 in cash, along with the bond payable liability of $50 million. The credit shortage of $1,500,000 is the premium on bonds payable. As part of the recognition of the bond premium over time, the amortization process begins by dividing the total premium by the life of the bonds. Therefore, the $1,500,000 would be amortized equally 30 years and twice a year, a total of 60 periods. Assume that the town of Blue uses the straight line method to amortize the premium. Blue would make an entry on June 30th to recognize the bond premium amortization and the semi-annual interest payment. Note that the bondholders will receive $2,500,000 in cash, which is the stated rate of the bond, 10%, times the face value of the bond, $50 million, divided by two, since interest is paid semi-annually. However, the interest expense is $25,000 lower because of the effects of the premium amortization. Bonds are not always sold at a premium or discount. If the stated rate of interest is the same as the going market rate, then they will simply sell at face value and there will be nothing to amortize. Assume that the stated rate of interest on Blue's bonds is 10% and the market rate is also 10%. The bonds would sell at face value, or $50 million in this example. The entry would simply recognize the receipt of cash and the corresponding liability. On June 30th, Blue would then recognize the 10% semi-annual interest expense and cash payment, which will be identical since it is not amortizing any premium or discount.